Hello everyone, it's Julie Sommers from Truly Madly Deeply Happy and I'm here today with Ali Monaghan from Happy Soul. Hi Ali, how are you doing? Hi Julie, I'm really well, thank you. Yeah, very good. Good, good. We've got an exciting show lined up for you today. We're going to be talking about uh, why, why it's so hard to change, you know, why people hang on to stuff and hang on to it for years and years and years when it's really creating a lot of pain for them and also what to do about that. Our intention with the show is always to give you little tools uh, about how you can shift things out of your life that no longer belong there. And uh, so I thought we'd start off, Ali, um, I'm going to throw it over to you in a sec, but just talking a little bit about why we hold on to things. And I think uh, we hold on to things because it's keeping us in a familiar uh, safety even if it's not nice. You know, people get used to their story, they get used to the things that have happened to them and that their, their story, and what I mean by that is the story of what's happened to them in their life, all this story is stored in your head, you know, um, we hold on to and it kind of ends up defining who we are. And uh, But often it's uh, it, it doesn't have to be like that. You know, for example, if somebody has a huge trauma and it's defined their whole life and 40 years later they're talking about it and it's really still impacting on them. Uh, it doesn't need to be like that, I believe. So let's talk a little bit more about why people hold on to stuff, Ali. Can you just talk about that? Yeah, sure. Um, and again to the listeners, we will sort of go over a little bit things again and again, but we do that for a reason, don't we, Julie? It's because sometimes you don't get it the first time, and sometimes you have to listen to things several times before you kind of go, ah, so even though they're kind of simple principles, we hope that you just get that by overlaying it, you'll start to realize that something is possible for you as well. So and we have, put, yeah. And sometimes, Ali, it's because we can't remember what we talked about a few months ago. <laughs> Yeah, okay, obviously it could be that as well. <laughs> um, so, yeah, lots of different reasons why we hold on to things. And I'm a big believer that it's about beliefs, I suppose. And when we talk about beliefs, we're talking about habits as well, aren't we? And habits become beliefs and then they sort of become who we are. Or they, that we sort of believe. Okay, we seem to have a little hiccup there. Um, we've, we've lost Ali, have we? Ali? I'm so here. Um, perhaps yeah. I can keep talking while we're waiting for her. Hello. Hello, here she is. Oh, okay, I'll just keep okay. on waiting for you. So continue on, Ali. I'll just check my connection. Yeah, so sorry, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to repeat myself, but I'm a firm believer that it is about what we perceive and how we process and, and our beliefs about our world and ourself. For example... Sometimes holding on to things is just because we don't know any different. Simply mm. just don't know how to be any different. Um, but if we really break that down, a lot of reasons for not stepping out and letting go of that thing is because we don't feel ready. We don't feel we've got the right support to be any different. So, for example, we might not know about tapping and how effective it can be at starting to let go of the habits and the behaviors. Um, you know, a big one for people is worrying that, okay, if I start to go into letting go of this thing, um, say, for example, it might be getting over a loved one dying, then it's going to open up a can of worms and I don't know if I'll cope and I'll end up in a, you know, in a worse situation and I might need to take some medication or see a psychiatrist, which is fine, but I think that can be a real genuine concern for people is like, you know, what's it going to bring up? Is this process going to be really painful? Um, and how does it actually work anyway? Do, do you know, am I just expected to just pour my heart and soul out and feel better? Um, and of course the mind will just go, well, I, I've tried that before and it didn't work. So lots and lots of reasons for um, holding on to things. I think also you, you, you and I are big lovers of Dr. Joe Dispenza and he talks a lot, doesn't he, about the neural pathways and when we talk about neural pathways we're talking about just processes in the brain and little connections in the brain that 
like pathways, aren't they? So we can have pathways of almost like happiness and contentment and peace, and we can also have pathways of um, judgment, judging ourselves or um, repeating the same negative thought patterns. So I think sometimes it's also a challenge to start creating those new pathways. And as I say, when we do EFT, it can start opening up that new pathway really quickly. And that new pathway might be the the possibility of having something different in your life. Mm. Um, so I hope I, I hope I've made myself clear. There's a little bit of a waffle, but the the point I'm trying to make is that we we get stuck because we don't know any different, and maybe we don't even know how the brain works and how the body works. So we just kind of stay there. Absolutely. Also, you know, it's yeah. very very quick how time goes. So something that you're worried about think I'll get over it one day and you know 30 years later you're still thinking about it and you know really it's it's, it's an unhealthy way to be. Um, what I was going to say to Ali is I think some people have the perception people don't get over this sort of thing and you yeah. know that that is a belief that a lot of individuals might have but where is the truth in it? So say for example if you have a big trauma um, you know you're in a war-torn country or you've been really sexually abused or you know some yeah. of the big T's and people go well I, I, yeah, people don't get over this sort of thing it just ruins them for the rest of their life you know I, I don't believe that it has to be that way you know and I'm not being disrespectful for anyone who has been through that pain I believe that you can still be a happy person and have a happiness decor even when you have had something like that happen in your life because I've seen it in my practice and um, uh, you know so I want to really encourage people out there who think well this is just my lot it's, it's not the way our bodies and our brains work. You know, and I think that, you know, I'd like to talk a little bit about matrix today, if that's okay, and how we re-image uh, a memory in people's minds. Is that going too far off topic, Ellie? You tell me. No, no, I think if we, if you, I'm sure, in your beautiful, elegant way, if we simply explain the process, I think that's going to be very helpful. Because we both use that process, don't we, a lot. Well, yes, and I think, um, thank you, beautiful and elegant way. <laughs> okay. Um, look, I think that the way matrix works is our brain works in feelings and pictures. So you have a feeling in your body, and that creates a you know a sensation in your body. It gets all you know you have a chemical reaction. And the same if you see a picture in your head of something you know sad. Like I was reading this case history the other day, and this woman could remember when her father left home. She was holding on to his leg, and she was a little girl, and she really did not want it to go. And she held on to that, and um, so that's a picture in your mind. But you can also hold on to a feeling when you think of something, and you get this feeling. And the way that Matrix works is we go back in there and we change that picture. So, say for example, I had a client this week, and uh, she had a really traumatic. Um, time in hospital when she was a little three-year-old. She was in Bill Country Hospital. Uh, the mothers, the parents weren't allowed in and she had life-threatening asthma. And she, this really traumatised her. And what really uh, stuck in her mind was there was this big black machine, as she called it, in the corner. And it was, what she didn't know, it was oxygen. What she thought it was, was that the nurses came and put that thing over the children's head when they were naughty to kill them. And it was really a, a, a huge memory for her. So we went back in there and we repainted that scene. We got out our mental paint brushes and we got the mother to go and tell the matron, excuse me, I'm going to be staying here with my daughter. We got a bed in next to her cot. We put the mother in the bed. We had the little girl crawling into bed with her mum each night and it was their little secret. And we, um, we repainted the... Um, the colour of the oxygen machine. She also brought in a friend, an imaginary friend, who was just beautiful and she had little angel wings and you know, so all of this picture is being repainted. Now some people might say, Oh, that's just BS because it didn't really happen. But my question is, because we know that the brain works in recalling pictures, what does it matter if we just change that picture a little bit to one of safety, to one of non trauma? So that the brain will gradually go back and think, oh no, that's all right, that's okay, and it'll let it go because it's just a memory. It's no longer real. 
an really hard concept for people to, to grasp, but it's no longer real. It happened then. We keep rehearsing that same picture over and over and over and over and over and over again, and it strengthens it, and you can never let go of it. You can't let go of what you're holding on to tightly. And, you know, the thing is, if you paint a really beautiful picture, your brain might flip back there and it'll stop going there after a while because it'll go, no, no, that's all right now. Go on. And this was really fast. It was 20 minutes. And, you know, what I was going to say is for people out there who think, well, I, you know, why should that work? I mean, isn't it just hoodwinking the brain? Isn't it just covering it up? And what we were talking about before, Ali, before we came on live, is, well, isn't that what drugs do? You know? Isn't that what they do? They cushion the yeah. mind, they calm down all the chemicals, just the same way as remembering a beautiful picture instead of a traumatic one. That also stops chemical reactions from having that happening in our body. So that's basically the way that matrix re-imprinting works. We're putting in a different print. It's like we're getting out the old photo and we're putting in a new one, but we're associating it with feelings, you know, with yeah. our body. Yeah, I think yeah, that's exact, exactly it. You may have already said this, so I apologise if you if I missed it. And one of the other really lovely things about Matrix, and the really important things is, we first sort of talk to that other person in the picture, that's don't we, well, and certainly. use tapping to relieve any trauma that was happening at the time. So we're kind mm. of taking that away, aren't we? Calming the nervous system down, working out what the belief is perhaps that was made on that day like the world's scary or nurses are dangerous or hospitals are bad. And 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 after that process, then the, the picture we start to change, don't we? But sometimes, I don't know if this has happened with you as well, Julie, I've, I've picked up that we, we just do, literally do a few rounds of tapping on one of the emotions and suddenly it becomes clear that you quickly need to really just resource that person with all the good things first. So you can you can be very very creative in the matrix reimprinting process, which basically just means reimprinting a new picture, doesn't it? And the matrix being, I suppose, you know, just the overlaying of life and the intricacies and all the interconnections between everything. Because it sounds, you know, people go matrix reimprinting. That sounds really weird, but actually, it's like you said, it's just imprinting a new picture once you've relieved the trauma of the old picture. And it's really that simple, isn't it? And it's so powerful, and it can be anywhere between 15 minutes to an hour's process, depending on how creative you want to be, how many people in the picture you want to have a dialogue with and make peace with, um, and also how many beliefs were made. So, yeah, I think it's it's every session I do now, we, we use that process. Yeah, it's wonderful. And for people who have the problem with the word matrix, I mean, we could just relabel it and call it um, creative imagination or something yeah. like that. But I think yeah. the difference is the difference is sitting in a room with someone saying, "Okay, let's imagine that event to be different." Okay, just sit there and you get your imagination out. The the way it works is because we are tapping on points. Uh, we're tapping on points while we're doing this. So, uh, you know, that's the whole thing about EFT and matrix three and printing work. We're never just working with the mind. And I think that's why it's so fast. You know, we're working with the body. Um, yeah. Yes, I think that's it. And it, we overcomplicate it sometimes, don't we, Julie? And people, I think that's what holds people from, you know, that the question that we started with is why we hold on to things. And I think that's one of the key things is because we overcomplicate things and, and because of all the beliefs we've taken on about, well, it has to be hard. Healing has to be hard, and it has to take forever and weeks on end, and and it can be really, really stressful. Well, no, not always. And and yes, of course, there'll be tears, and there'll be maybe some upset, and there might be some shaking, there might be some um, feeling uncomfortable or hot. Uh, but really, nothing in comparison to the original trauma and what they're living with, which is being stuck. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think that perception thing too is really, really strong, you know, that I can't get over this because it's too big. Uh, it, you know, even if it's big, like if you were raped, you know, it's it's pretty big. Yeah. It's massive. Yeah. And there's also that part of, you know, the misunderstanding about getting rid of the problem for yourself and forgiving and all that sort of thing is, oh, well, that guy's got off with it. 
if, if I make myself really happy and get on with my life and just let it go. It's almost like I know that a lot of people find it hard to let go because it's like they've got away with it. Oh, I, yeah. I have to show them how much I'm suffering in my life because of what they did to me. But the point is you're making yourself suffer. It's not, it's not, um, it's almost like you're giving them more power by continuing their power over you. Yes, you know I mean? that's, yes and it's, it's, a, it's an interesting one, isn't it? I was working with the, um, a lady doing the matrix tapping and exactly that happened, Julie. We were, we were individually looking at all the people in the picture and put them all in bubbles and worked out what the feelings were towards those people and when it came to this one guy, you know, we'd gone through the feelings of shame, but then it came up and I asked her the question, I said, how do you feel about him now? And often will people get to a stage where they say, well, actually, I feel compassion towards them now. I feel sorry for them. And I always know that's a really good place. But she was like, oh, I said, are you ready to let him go? And she said, no, no. And I said, well, what's the reason for holding him? She goes, well, you know, he was really bad. He really, really affected me. So we worked through those feelings to the point where she said, actually, you know, I think, I, I think I've think i got, you know, less of a charge when I look at him now, which was an indicator that she she didn't need to be right anymore. She didn't need to make him wrong, and it was okay almost to forgive him, I suppose, it comes down to. Mm. It's the same kind of thing. What, my point is that, you know, yes, it happens such a lot that people go, I don't want to let them off the hook. She didn't want to let him off the hook because he'd done a really bad thing. But when we worked through all the emotions, she came to the realization, well, actually, it's over. It was bad. He was naive. He didn't know any better. All that higher understanding. And that's why that's where tapping comes in, folks. That's where tapping is really powerful. So Julie and I and many other practitioners, we're just following a, a simple protocol, and we're a bit creative, and we use our own personality. But it's simple, and it doesn't have to be that complicated, and it just takes a bit of practice sometimes, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. And talking about simple, Ali, you know, we, we were once again discussing the art of the simple tap, and we'll remind you again today, everybody, you know, just letting it go, letting it go, letting it go. You know, when you're really focused on something and, you you know, some people say, oh, I don't know what words to say. Oh, it's too hard. You, all you need to say is releasing it. It's safe to let it go. And I think the word safe is really good in that instance. If you're hanging yeah. on to something, creating yeah. that, my question would be to people, how long do you want to keep it? Do you want to keep yeah. it for another day, uh, another mm -hmm. week? Uh, yeah. How about a couple of years? Do you, want to, do you want to keep it for how long have you had it? 20 years? Do you want to keep it for another 20? And I'm not yeah. being saying that. I, I'm just pointing out to them that the, the power that you feel when you make choices for your life is so incredible. Yes. You know, we really make those choices and go, you know what? I'm going to get rid of this. I absolutely am going to get rid of it. I will no longer choose pain for myself. And you know, to, just in that statement um, opens up a whole new life to people. Yes. <laughs> That's all right. Yes, it does. Yeah, so we've covered quite a bit there. I'm wondering if there's anything else to help clarify, you know, this why we're holding on to things. Um, yeah, but I suppose it's things like we've already said. We, we, we have this belief structure, don't we, about it being too hard. Um, what you talked about also, you know, just not, not, not knowing how to be any different. And it's a very, it, when, when we break it down and hopefully the way we've done it today, hopefully we're giving you as listeners and viewers the, the possibility that actually you can feel a lot better and it doesn't have to take a long time to feel better. It's literally like you said just then, it's a choice. So the first choice that you've made is to listen to this webinar or uh, this, this um, recording. That is really empowering in itself, making those little choices. They're part of you making a change, aren't they? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, let's, let's give people a little checklist, Ali. So the first thing is, you know, you start to get the seeds of, yeah, well, maybe I think I, it's time or I can do it. What do you do next? Probably watch a few videos, stay on the fringes of change. Um, there are EFT 
lots of places that you can learn it for free, including our two websites. We'll put the info below. Um, and if you want to really fast track things, go to a practitioner. And you know, it's a really good idea to have. Uh, you don't need to do a lot of preparation and to be ready. You know, some people think, oh my God, there's so many things I, I, I need to sort myself out before I go to the therapist to get sorted out. You know, but you, you really don't. You're just human, you rock up, um, and we just, you know, one thing I think we've really been trained to do is to ask the right questions, Ali. Yes. Um, that's one Good. of the most things I've learned. And sometimes asking questions and, and just sort of pummeling a little bit in that area, and they go, oh, no, no. No, that, that bit's fine. No, I'm not worried about that. You go, okay, so what do you, you know, sometimes you really need, you just know where to go as a, as a practitioner. Um, so when you've done that, you can always, once you've learned to tap to, you can tap at home. But I, I pretty much, not that we're trying to drum up business for ourselves, but, you know, I would pretty much encourage anyone who has held on to stuff, particularly for a long time, to just start off with the therapist. So you can really get to know the process and to fast track your healing. What what do you say, Ali? <laughs> I say is <laughs> my little boy. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so, today. so this is how relaxed Julie and I can be at times and we just like to keep it going even though our days can be unpredictable. <laughs> um, um Yes, I, I totally agree, and I, and I, it's interesting. Maybe we can perhaps close with this. I was just talking to a lady before, and I we were just having a conversation before she even commits to working with me, because she, like you were just oh, saying, she was saying, I, "Oh, can you just say that again? You're really broken up about the last." Oh, sorry. Thing you said. Um, yeah, so I was just saying, it's just saying what you just said. Is some people feel like they've got to be really prepared before they make a, come for a session and I was just talking to a lady earlier we were having a like a little Skype session to see whether we were a right fit and she was basically saying to me if I work with you what do I have to do before and I said nothing I might just send you some information about where you're at in your life but really it's a case of just go with the process and trust that process and sometimes people just have to take a leap of faith so I think it's very important, and we always say this, don't we? If you've had big stuff going on, see a practitioner um, because you don't want to get lost and lose your confidence and get overwhelmed and feel even worse. And we are both skilled. I'm, I'm quite confident at saying this. We're both skilled. We've had a lot of experience. It's not a sales pitch. It's just that we know we have this amazing um, tool that can help you feel better. That's it, really. Absolutely. Yeah. And also what's, you know, when you said, you know, when you've had big stuff too, I think it's all relative. Like for some people, say for example, people who've been rich all their lives who are under financial threat, that can be a big trauma, okay? For yes. somebody who's been from a war-torn country and forced to flee, etc., they might look at that person who's still got a house and relatively comfortable who's freaking out about money and go, what's their problem? But what I'd like to say to everyone is everything is relative. You know, your pain is your pain. It may not be somebody else's pain. So when Ali and I talk about, you know, if something really big's happening in your life, it doesn't mean that you, you know, have to have all the biggies. It's just what gets in the way of your happiness and, uh, you know, having a learning EFT can really clear the way. Clear the way. Yay! <laughs> You can move forward on your horse. <laughs> okay, well, I think that's it. Um, yes. Yep. Have you got anything more you want to add, Ellie? I, no, I haven't actually. I just enjoy these sessions with you, Julie, and I hope you guys too. I hope you feel you're getting a little sample or some deeper understanding of how it, you know, can be applied in your life, whether that's on your own or with a practitioner. Thanks yeah. for listening. Remember to Sorry, there's a bit of a delay as usual. But remember to give us some feedback. So if there's something, if, you know, if you have a burning question, ask us and we'll do our very best to answer it. Because uh, each week we get together and think, what do we talk about this week? But it's always great to have a bit of guidance, you know, find out what, what you need. So, um, yeah. yeah, just put it in the comments below. And 
us know what you'd like to know. Okay, that's it from me. So it's Julie Sommers from TrulyMedicalGeekHappy.com signing off. And and thank you for listening from me, Alison Monaghan from HappySoul.com. And we'll see you next week. Okay, see you everybody. Have a good one.